Amen. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. So we um, do the Spirit and Power of Yahweh Shemiel Shai. Whenever your brother's ready, y'all can begin to record. Of course, we want to give our honor and glory to Yahweh by Shem Mashiach Wumalaki Washai. Right for another beautiful Shabbat, another beautiful uh, uh, feast of trumpets. It's like a feast of uh, uh, tabernacles. Right, we had trumpets early this month, but um, a mighty, mighty seventh year, uh, seventh month uh, coming in uh, 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 to complete out this year. So all praise to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. We're gonna we're gonna kick it off with Leviticus 23 and 23. So you can. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 and verse number 23. And it reads, And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, right. a memorial blowing of trumpets. Right, jump to 33. Verse number 33. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month, Shall be the feast of tabernacles. Shall be the what? Shall, Shall be the feast of tabernacles. Right, read on. For seven days unto Yahweh. Right, so we understand that feast of tabernacles is for seven days. Let's read on, okay? Verse 35. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no, so, no servile work therein. Right. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. Right, read on. These are the feasts of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto right. Yahweh, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon this, everything upon his day. Right, read on. Beside the Sabbath of Yahweh, and besides your gifts, and beside your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, ye shall give unto Yahweh. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto Yahweh seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take slucky, and ye shall take you on the first day of the on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, right. branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows, and the brook. And ye shall rejoice before Yahweh your God seven days. Verse 41. Right. And ye shall keep it a feast unto Yahweh seven days in the year. How long? Seven, seven days, days in the year. year. Read on, it shall be a statue forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You can you can read 42 and rest right there at the time. Ye shall dwell in you shall ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelite born shall dwell in booths. So the Lord has the feast of tabernacle set up. That we're dwelling in booths. We're not dwelling in a, the mightiest house. We're not in a uh, Airbnb, right? We're not in a damn mansion. We're in these booths because we understand that, through the, on a spiritual level, these tabernacles are symbolic of our bodies, us being in uh, not a permanent body. We're in bodies that's made to, to, to be destroyed. We're in bodies that's made to be uh, 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 vanished away, perished forever. We're in bodies that's here for one day and gone the next day. Give me a uh, real quick. Can you go to the book of Job? It's like it. Yeah, go to Job chapter four, verse seventeen. Right, the brother gonna read first. But um, we're in bodies that's uh, not meant to be permanent. But on a on a on a, as we're uh, keeping the feast of tabernacles, we must keep our minds that most high willing, the Lord is gonna allow us to enter into a permanent body, a permanent tabernacle, one that's not made by by man's hands, but made in the heavens. And we're gonna get that. Let's go to Job chapter four. And verse 17. This is the book of Job, chapter 4, and verse number 17. Right. Shall mortal man be more just than God? And we understand we can't be more just than, than Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, especially being in these bodies. Right? These bodies are wicked. Right? The Lord said, uh, uh, our righteousness is even as filthy rags in Isaiah 64 and verse 6. Right? Read on, King. Shall a man be more pure than his maker? What the Lord say? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Where we would never be more pure than Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. Right? Although we strive to be perfect, we can never be perfect in these bodies. Read on, King. Verse 18. Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. Read. How much less in them that dwell in houses of clay. What the Lord say? How, How much, much less, less in them, them that, that dwell, dwell in houses, houses of clay. And that's on twofold. Of course, we dwell in houses that's made of damn brick, mortar, so on and so forth. But also, these bodies were of clay. We're of dust and ashes. We're here today and going tomorrow. So as, as we continue out the Feast of Tabernacles, keep in mind that the Most High has a body prepared for you in the third heavens. And that every single brother, sister, and child can enter in those bodies if you do the work of the Most High and you're diligent in uh, believing in Yahweh Shemel Shah. 
Finish this out, King. Whose foundation is in the dust. What the Lord say? Whose foundation is in the dust. Right, man can never boast. You got brothers saying they're the strongest, nobody's stronger than them, nobody's faster than them, smarter than them, wiser, so on and so forth, or better than them because they're in a particular camp. And the Lord said, whose foundation is in the dust? We're literally of dust and ashes. We're at the damn uh, uh, grass and the the, the uh, dirt that's, that's, that's over there. And the Most High is, really he's talking that talk. He's letting us know that we're nothing in his eyes. We're nothing. We could be here right now and the Most High can cut us down tomorrow. So we got to keep that in mind. But the only way for us to live and be planted forever is through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Read on, King. Whose foundation is in the dust, right. which are crushed before the moth. They are destroyed from morning to evening. What the Lord say? They, they are, are destroyed, destroyed from, from morning, morning to evening. evening. And the Lord said, man is destroyed from morning to evening. Read on, King. They perish forever without any regard. Read on. So like it, without any regarding it, does not their excellency, which is in them, go away. They die even without wisdom. And the Most High can take your spirit away even without wisdom. I'm going to get one more. Go to the book of Philippians, chapter 3, and start at verse 20. Right, so again, uh, as we're continuing with the Feast of Tabernacles, right through the Spirit and Power of Yahweh Shemel Shai, we want to keep our minds on the spiritual uh, tabernacles that the Most High is going to give us. The spiritual bodies that's going to be planted forever. Bring this out, King. The book of Philippians, chapter 3, and verse number 20. For our conversation is in heaven. What the Lord say? For, For our, our conversation, conversation is, is in heaven. heaven. Right, because if our conversation was here, we know what's going to happen here. What's the, what's the, what's the major thing that's going to happen on the earth very soon? Destruction. destruction. So if our conversation was in the earth, we only looking for destruction. If our mind was on the world, then the Most High is only going to bring destruction. Right? Actually, hold on. Let me get a quick precept before we continue. Go to the book of uh, James, chapter, I believe it's James chapter 3. Baba Gashai. I'm going to pass it. I'm not going to be long-winded. James chapter 3 and sort of verse 15. Okay? The Baba book Gashai. of James chapter 3 and verse number 15. Right, bring it up. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, right? central, Devilish. So everything that's on this earth is sensual and devilish. It's not of the most high. So our conversation is what? Go back to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3 and verse 20. Right. For our conversation is in heaven. Now, when you go into this word conversation, it literally is uh, citizenship. When you go into that word, in the, I believe in the Hebrew, or like the Greek, it goes into the word citizenship. So the most high saying our citizenship meaning what? Our uh, sovereignty. Our, um, our our true homeland, our true rest, our true place in this in this uh, world is to be in the heavens, not in to be in the third heavens necessarily. But the Most High saying that we're going to have rulership on the earth. Now, of course, we look to Yahweh Shai, who's in the heavens. Yahweh, who's in the heavens. And as long as we're believing in Yahweh Bashim Shai, then we're also in the heavens, like the Lord said in John three and twelve. We don't okay? Verse Slucky, Philippians three and twenty. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for, for the Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Right, read on. Who shall change our vile body? Who shall do what? Who, Who shall, shall change, change our, our vile body? No, we'll stay in these filthy bodies forever. Who, Who shall, shall change, change our, our vile body? body? Read. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. The Lord said he's going to change our vile bodies that is fashioned like unto his glorious body. So we're not going to be in these bodies made of clay forever. And the Lord has a better body for us, a better, more perfect and excellent tabernacle, which is the spiritual body, which is going to come down from the heavens. And when Yahweh Shai returns, hey, that's, that's as we're returning back on the earth. As long as you believe in Yahweh Shai, then you're also going to be brought most high willing to that spiritual body. Read on, King. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body? Right, read on. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And we know that Yahweh Shai over, overcame death, right? Overcame pain, right? All, all of the ways that we feel in this body, and the Lord has overcame that. He overcame lust, temptation, so on and so forth. So, brothers, keep that in mind. Yeah, we going through it right now. Yeah, we mourning and, and, or, and groaning, I should say, uh, and, and dealing with the infirmities of this flesh, but that's not for too much longer, right? So, I'm going to pass it. I'm going to get you better next time. I'll praise him more God, all, all praises to the Most High that every brother and sister came out to celebrate this Feast of Tabernacles with us, man. Yeah. Hey, it's a mighty time. Can a brother go to 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, in verse 1? 5 and verse 1. And like the brother's saying, we got to desire these spiritual bodies, man. We got to desire this new tabernacle. The tabernacle that we're in right now, man, it, it, it's, it, it's for uh, a season. It, it's vain. Go ahead, Ken. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 1. I got you. Go on. The book of 2 Corinthians... 
chapter 5 and verse number 1. Bring it up. For we know that if our earthly house of the tabernacle were dissolved. Was what? Were, were dissolved. dissolved. And the Lord said, and, and Paul was saying, hey, look, if our earthly tabernacle is dissolved, man, if we experience death, if our bodies passed away, what do we have? We have a building of Yahweh. We have a what? We have a building of Yahweh. What's the spiritual bodies? We have a building of Yahweh. And we got to remember that for the Feast of Tabernacles, man. These tents are nothing, man. They're $50 tents from Amazon. Hey, man, I, I, remember, I remember last year, man, I was packing up my tent, a $50 tent from Amazon, and it broke. This, the, the whole thing just snapped apart, man. Hey, that's these bodies, man. Anything can happen to these bodies, man. Brothers can go play sports, snap an ankle, wake up the next day with the back hurting. You know, groaning in pain, man. It's going to say that. Keep reading, Ken. In house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this, we groan. We do what? We groan. What we do when we wake up? We groan. Hey, we wake up groaning, man. We wake up saying, hey, look, my back is hurting. We wake up saying, I don't want to go to work. I'm tired. My flesh is weary, man. I can't do this anymore, man. We might groan in that expectation, man, because we're experiencing that in the moment, but we have that heavenly body waiting for us, man. Which is why we have to continue to push through, continue to have that hope and be able to understand, hey, look, if we continue in this work, we will receive spiritual bodies, man. If we continue in this work, we're not going to be dwelling in, in $50 Amazon tents, man, in the kingdom, man. We're going to be dwelling in, in, in our palaces, man. Right. We're going to be dwelling in, in, in mansions built by the heathen, man, made of gold. So we got to remember that. Keep reading, King. Uh, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house. Which is from heaven. And we have to earnestly desire that, man. We have to earnestly remember it. We don't have to earnestly remember that the time that we're in right now is for a season. It's not to, it's not to uh, dwell upon it and say, man, I, I, it's too much. It's time to remember the things that are going to come to pass, man. Right. The things that are going to come in the future. Keep reading, King. If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in it, this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed. And the Lord said that we're being burdened, man. When you're in these tabernacles, you're burdened. I'm sure when brothers and sisters were sleeping last night, man, they were cold. They were sleeping on the ground, the hard ground. Turning, try, try to turn backwards and forth. I was asking around. I was asking brothers, how do you sleep? And brothers said, man, I woke up five times in the night. It was too cold. It was too, man, I had to turn around. My back was hurting. I was asking, that's what happens in these bodies, man. When we had that spiritual body, we wanted to deal with that. That's what we're earnestly desiring for, that spiritual body. Right. Keep it in your camp. But clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up. That what? That mortality, mortality might, might be swallowed up. And mortality being swallowed up, it's talking about us becoming immortal, man. Us becoming in the spiritual bodies, being immortal. Keep reading. Of life, now he that hath wrought us for the self-same thing is Yahweh. Is who? Is Yahweh. And Yahweh has presented us for that, man. Go to Romans, the 8th chapter. 8 and verse 20. Because right now we're subject to vanity. Right now we're subject to vain bodies that perish, that have pains at night, that have pains in the morning, that have pains during the day. That have, you, might get, you might have a damn spirit of depression hop on you. You might have a spirit that just comes through and, and just uh, turns you over during the day. Hey, that's, uh, these bodies are subject to that. Read it, King. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 20. For the creature... Was made subject to vanity. What did the Lord say? For the creature was made subject to vanity. So this tabernacle that we have right now is subject to vanity. That vanity is going to sin and death. Keep reading, King. Not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. Who have done what? Who have subjected the same in hope. As we draw on these tabernacles, we su we are, we're subjected to hope right now, man. We're not out here just for no reason. We ain't all just come together and say, let's go out in, in the middle of October when it's freezing cold out, and celebrate uh, this go intense for no reason uh, as a get-together. We're doing this because we have hope. If we keep this, we're going to receive those spiritual bodies, man. Keeping the laws of the Lord, man. Dwelling in, this, in these tents for a season to receive the kingdom later on. Keep reading, King. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage shall of corruption. Be, shall be what? Shall, shall be, be delivered from, from the, the bondage, bondage of corruption. And we're going to be delivered from these boosts, man. Hey, this is going to be a time and season. Well, we're gonna be we're gonna be pilgrims upon the earth, man. You might not even have a tent. You might have some sticks and some leaves. You might have to set it, you might have to set it up. You might have to you might have to get down with some mud and try to make the little covering up when it starts raining. We we're good, we'll have hope that we'll be uh, delivered from that, man. In those days, keep reading, King. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Into the what? Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And that's what we want. Keep reading. 
For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves. So we might be groaning. We might be going through things during the day. We might be going through things during the week. But what do we have? Keep reading, Ken. <laughs> Waiting for the adoption to wit. The redemption of our bodies. The what? The redemption, redemption of, of our, our bodies. bodies. And we're waiting for the redemption of our bodies, man. The spiritual bodies. That's what every brother should be up here waiting for, man. Receiving the kingdom and receiving that spiritual body and leaving these tabernacles that we're joining in now, man. These, these bodies are nothing. We want the spiritual bodies, man. Every brother should be up here earnestly designing that spiritual body. Like the brother said, the brother brought in Philippians, the third chapter, in verse 21, man. Who's going to change these vile bodies, man? I'm tired of this body. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure brothers deal with pains, man. I'm sure brothers deal with thoughts. I'm sure brothers deal with certain things that they say, man, I wish I didn't have to deal with that, man. That's what we want to desire in the kingdom, man. We want to desire these new tabernacles and to move off from these earthly tabernacles that were only in for a season. Right. But I'm going to pass it. Can you give me um, Psalms, the 51st chapter? You can go to verse uh, 3. Right, and like the brothers are saying, during tabernacles, we want to keep our minds on these spiritual tabernacles or these spiritual bodies we're going to get so what so we can serve the most high more in a more perfect manner more perfectly so can you read your god can god song chapter 51 and verse number three mm -hmm. for i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee the only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest behold I was shepherd in iniquity. What did that say? I was shepherd in iniquity. Right. So by nature, we all have urges and appetites that are just, you might have a thought and it just came out of nowhere. Right. Evil thought. Why? Because we read that again, King. Behold, I was shepherd in iniquity. Uh -huh. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Right. So in these bodily, in these, in these, what's the word I'm looking for? In these carnal tabernacles that we're living in, we're subject to sin. Right, we all like I just said, we all have urges or appetites that just come out of nowhere. Even um, give me that um second edges, the fourth chapter, right? Go to verse I think it's thirty. By nature, the Most High He programmed us to just have certain urges, temptations that we have to deal with while we're living in these bodily tabernacles. Read what you got, King. Second edges, chapter four and verse number thirty. Uh -huh. For the grain of start up, start up one King. Go. Yeah, start at twenty nine. Verse. Number 29. Uh -huh. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, mm -hmm. and at the place where the evil is sown passed down the way, mm -hmm. there cannot it come that is sown with good. For the grain of evil seed has been sown in the heart of Adam. What does that mean? It means no the most high, even in Adam, and we can go to the we're gonna go to the third chapter after this. Evil was sown into Adam. Right. Meaning we all, and we're going to read, like I said in the, uh, uh, the third chapter, everyone after Adam has the same, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, condition. Evil heart, right evil condition. Right, we're all, that's what we all go through while we're dwelling in this, like we're talking about this bodily, this carnal tabernacle. We're going to go to Paul too. Paul talked about the same thing. Uh, can you give me that in the third chapter? I think I want 19. Okay. The book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse number 19. Bring it out. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt second, thou Second Edges 3. Come on. Second Edges 3? Yeah, 3 and 19. Second Edges chapter 3 and verse number 19. Right. And thy glory went through four gates of fire and of earthquake and of wind and of cold that thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob and diligence unto the generation of Israel. And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart. And what does that mean? The Most High, when you read about the heart in the scriptures, it's talking about the mind. Right. So when the Most High said he didn't take away the wicked, we all have wicked, like I said, we all have urges that we don't want to have, right? That in this in this tabernacle, in this body that we have now, we all have urges that we want to serve the Most High, 
and we want to serve him perfectly, but it's just we always going to have that sin in us that the most high programmed us to have. Am I read on? Mm. <clears throat> that thy love might bring forth fruit in them. Go on. <laughs> For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, Go on. transgressed and was overcome. Right, so Adam, the first Adam, he, he, was tra he transgressed. Right, he had an evil heart and he was overcome by sin. Go on. And so be all they that are born of him. What did that say? And so, and so be all they, they that were born, born of him. You see that? So all throughout the seed line, since Adam, everyone's going to have that. Then this is the word I was looking for, that same infirmity, right. that same uh, corruption in us. Why? Because, again, like we read in Second Ezra, the fourth chapter, it was programmed to be like that. Read on. Thus infirmity was made permanent, uh -huh. and the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root. So that the good departed away, and the evil abode still. Uh -huh. So the times passed away, and the years were brought to an end. Then didst thou raise thee up a servant called David, whom thou commandest to build a city unto thy name, and to offer incense and oblations unto thee therein. Right, you can go to, uh, give me Romans, the seventh chapter. And you can start at 14. What you got? You, you, you want to come, come. And it's the book of Sirach, chapter 40 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Great travail is created for every man. Mm -hmm. And in heavy yoke. And a what? And in yeah, heavy, heavy yoke. yoke. What's that heavy yoke? We're talking about sin. That same malignity, that same infirmity that every man has to deal with. Right? And this is why we got to keep our mind on the spiritual tabernacle that the Most High has promised us. So we can, because again, I don't want to go off. I'm sure all the brothers and sisters out here. We don't want to go off in the way we do. We always talk about, and we have, uh, we have uh, um, the Day of Atonement for a reason. Because we all have sins that we got to atone for. Why, why is that? Because, again, we're programmed to go off. We're programmed to sin. But we have to keep our mind on the spiritual tabernacle the Most High has promised to give us because we're going to be able to serve him in what? In a more perfect manner. Right. Read on. And in heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. Mm -hmm. From the day that they go out of their mother's womb, to the day that they return to the mother of all things. Right, so you can go to um, Romans 7 chapter. Right. Go to verse Romans 14. chapter 7 and verse 14. All right, read. For we know that the law is spiritual, mm -hmm. but I am carnal. Well, what did Paul say? But, but I, I am carnal. Right, go on. Sold under sin. Right, what does sold under sin mean? What does it mean if you're a servant or you're sold to somebody? You got to do what they tell you to do. Right, like you're, you're a servant. So what what is Paul saying? So when sin comes and he has a temptation and he's feeling it, Sometimes he just does. Sometimes he just goes on. Why? Again, because that's how the Most High planned it to be. Why? Just like we read in, in Romans the eighth chapter, is because he subjected us to hope. If we were just perfect and we didn't have that sin, we would have nothing to hope for in the Most High. But now that we have that, we can hope that the Most High can deliver us into better. Right. We can hope that the Most High is going to give us those spiritual bodies. All right, go on. Come on. For that which I do, I allow not. Uh huh. For what? I would. What is it? What did Paul say? For, for what, what I, I would. would. All right, go on. That do I not. What did that? Let's read that again. God. For what I would. Uh -huh. mean, what is Paul saying? What he wants to do, what happens? That do I not. Meaning when he wants to keep the law of the most high and he wants to do it perfectly, he can't do it. Right. Because, again, we are programmed to sin. Go on. But what I hate, uh -huh. that do I. Meaning what? When he, when he, de um. The, what he hates is what is we talking about sin right. disobedience right. Right. when when that comes he does that because again that's just how is that we're prone to that we're subject to it go on if then i do that which i would not mm -hmm. i could sit unto the law that is good right read on now then it is no more i that do it but sin that dwells in me. Right. See, even Paul said it. He says it's, it's the sin that dwells in and that's doing it. Because, again, Paul doesn't want to do what he's He said it, that's what he would not. That's something he doesn't want to do. But what? It's the sin that dwells in us. Go on. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Mm -hmm. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Right. Go on. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Go on. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more that I do it, but sin 
that dwelleth in me. Right. This, yeah, read on. This is the point. God. Mm -hmm. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. You see that? When we would do good, when we want to keep the commandments perfectly, there's always something that comes up. There's always an urge. There's always a temptation. There's always an appetite, a passion that we just can't get past as in this carnal flesh. Right, read on. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Right, just like we've been talking about. In the inward man, we want to do good by the most high. We want to be obedient. Go on. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. Right, and that's what we read about in uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter. Right, the, but the, 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 um, the flesh, it wars against the spirit. And that's just that's just the, the nature of man. That's the nature that the most high put us in. Go on. And bringing me into captivity Go on. of the law of sin, which is in my memory. Read on. O wretched man that I am. What did Paul say? O wretched, wretched man, man that, that I, I am. am. All right, go on. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You see that? And that's why the most high did it, is because we have hope now. We have hope that the most high, like we read again in Romans the uh, um the eighth chapter, in uh second Corinthians the fifth chapter, that the most high he has a tabernacle for us that's going to be everlasting and that what we can we're not going to go off no we're not going to sin we're going to put off immortality like we read in first corinthians the 15th chapter right read on i thank you how through you i have my shock our lord so then with the mind i myself serve the law of god go on but with the flesh the law of sin right see that so that's why we have to again like the brothers have been talking about we have to keep our mind on the spiritual tabernacle that the most high is going to give us right because again these tabernacles that would in the spiritual these tabernacles that we dwell in in these booths that we dwell in during the uh tab, uh the feast of tabernacles right. they're not permanent the most high is going to give us those permanent tabernacles that permanent temple that we're all seeking so what so we can serve the most high in a more perfect manner like i said at first right. but i'm gonna uh, pass it con con all praise how about she was shocked i can't go back to leviticus 23 and uh 40 Bob Kishah. Khan, all praise to the most high. Hey, as brothers is is showing, hey, everything at the end of the day is double to that which is. It's not just, you know, coming out, buying your tent and everything. So all praise to the most high. Um, we gotta of course pay attention to the spiritual side of uh, side of things and the, and also the corner side of things so that we can know how to properly ba balance ourselves in this walk. But Khan, bring this up. Uh, <clears throat> the book of Leviticus, chapter twenty-three, and verse number forty. All right. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, right. and the boughs of thick trees, right. and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God Con, seven oh, days. Con, uh, go, uh, read the beginning again, Baba Kishah. Con, and ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees. The boughs of what? The boughs of, of goodly, goodly trees. trees. Right. Branches of palm trees, right, and the boughs of thick trees, right, and willows of the brook. Con, hey, and we all know that we we we're, we're them trees, we're them branches, Israel, right, and got to be the goodly trees, right, because we know all Israel is not celebrating tabernacles right now. People is outside, they doing their own thing, but the men of the Lord, the uh, women of the Lord, children of the Lord, you know, we're out here all praise to the Most High, right. Uh, Keeping a feast of tabernacles, keeping a feast of booth, right? Keeping it together in, in, in good spirit, right? And uh, read the latter part. And ye shall rejoice. And what? And ye shall rejoice. Uh huh. Before the Lord. Right. A, and a lot of times, you know, that's one. That's part of us being in the curses, right? Because we don't rejoice before the Lord, right? We we let our troubles again. Everything's double. Everything's double to that, which is of course. So you can see everything on every type of level. Right, Ma macro level and micro level, right? So right here, we, we got to rejoice before the Lord. And uh, especially when we come to uh, um, 1 John 5 and 3, right? When we try to keep the commandments, when we keep in the commandments, we got to always keep it in, in good heart because that's also going off when, we, when we're not doing our thing, whether it's uh, keeping a feast day or keeping a Sabbath or having your fringes on or, or anything. And like the brothers is saying, well, God, bring this up. First John to the five and verse number three. For this is the love of God. Right. That we keep his commandments. That we what? That we keep his commandments. Uh-huh. And his commandments are not grievous. Right. His commandments are not grievous at the end of the day. Right. It's not grievous, you know. Uh, uh, it's, it's a fun fun time, good time through the spirit. Right. 
Right? It's a fun time with Akim, the same thing. When we're keeping the commandments, when we're actually doing the will of the Most High, it's a good thing. It's a fun thing. Right? When we're going against the world uh, um, for, for all their wickedness, we're realizing what's actually uh, uh, righteous in front of the Lord and what's, what's wicked, you know, in this world. It's, and the, the commandments is not grievous. But we make it a big deal. That's why now Israel is in the situation that they're in. We're all in that situation. We get that. We get. We got that. Uh, that sin. That's that's bred inside of us. Go to Deuteronomy twenty-eight and forty-seven. So we always got to keep keep the will of the Lord in, in in good spirit, right? Whether it's keeping the feast days again or or having righteous judgment towards anything, doing our thing. Because again, that's that the law of of sin and the law of the Lord. They warn it. The law of the spirit. They, they warn against each other. Right, so we gotta always understand. Again, you. I'm. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who who run into some type of troubles uh, to plan um, during planning coming up here. Right, everybody came up to some some type of whether financial, whether it's the travel, whether it's the family, the baby need extra this and extra that, whatever it may be. There was there's always some type of trouble. Again, it's macro, micro. So the flesh gonna have its own trouble. Your back might start to hurt. Right. Or you might be out the spirit out of uh, out of nowhere. Right. But we got to fight through these things and rejoice. Keep the spirit going and um and uh, keep the ways of the most high. Regardless. God, bring this up. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse number 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God. Because what? Because, because thou, thou servest not, not the Lord, Lord thy God. God. With joyfulness. With what? With, with joyfulness. joyfulness. Uh-huh. And with gladness of heart. Right. For the abundance of all things. For the what? For, for the, the abundance, abundance of all things. things. Right. Therefore, shalt thou serve thy enemy. Right, you can rest right here, right? Because we don't serve the most high with joyfulness, right? Well, again, hey, we got to be like children. You see the kids, how they be joyful, you know, running around and all that stuff. We got to serve the most high with that same type of heart all the time, right? Well, again, no matter if the world is falling on top of, on top of us, right, or whether you're actually... Um, doing good or whatever right through the spirit just know sometimes you're gonna crash out some some way but always remember you gotta serve the most high with joyfulness because again go go back to second Ezra three and 31 about because because you know again that's that's the that's the thing that we're dealing with in this tabernacle in this time until we get the perfect body until we get the the perfect tabernacles right where where whereas nothing is going to uh uh, put us down and keep us keep us you know away from the from the will of the Lord at the end of the day. God bring this up. Second Ezra, chapter three and verse number thirty one. Bring it up. I do not remember. No twenty one. God twenty one. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome, and so be all they that are born of him. All right. Thus infirmity. Thus what? Thus, Thus infirmity. infirmity. All right. Was made permanent. And the law also in the heart of the people. Right. With the malignity right. of the root. So that the good departed away. So that what? So, so that the, the good, good departed, departed away. Uh -huh. And the evil. Abode, and the who? And the evil abode still. Right. Again, the good boat, the good trees, the good men of the Lord, children of the Lord, they, they departing from the wicked ways. They're not letting the cares of the world to put them down at the end of the day. They're going to depart from the world like we, you know, we departed from our homes where our brothers came from Rhode Island. New York, uh, Jersey, uh, Baltimore, Philly, right? We're all over the place. We departed. We came out here to, through the Spirit. We're doing our thing, keeping the ways of the Lord. So in a in the same macro and my bigger bigger picture, we got to depart from the worldly things, put away the, the worldly worries, and come back to Mosiah and 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 always focus on what the Yahweh Bashem is saying, because that's what's going to keep us through. If we're focusing on our problems, on the law of the uh, of the flesh, of the sin. Right, we're not gonna make it. You're gonna have that "woe is me" type of spirit, and you're not gonna make it. So we gotta always remember, we gotta keep the law of the Lord with joyfulness, regardless of it is what's going on. Rejoice unto the Lord and um, keep the ways, regardless, because that's the only way that we're, we're able to survive this place at the end of the day until we get our our uh, spiritual body. Mighty points that the brothers brought out. Can you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and go to verse 18? All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. So, Con, we understand that these bodies, uh, us desiring a new body, is because we can't please the Most High properly in these bodies, right? And we want to desire, right, a body that can please the Lord, right, which is that spiritual body. All right, bring this out, Ken. Okay? Con, the book of 2 Corinthians, 
chapter 4 and verse number 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at, at the things which are not seen. What the Lord say? But at the things which are not seen. Right, because you can't see, right, the kingdom, right? Right now we're looking around, we're seeing, we seeing Esau's kingdom. Right, we seeing RVs, we seeing tents, seeing umbrellas, we seeing all of this, we seeing the damn trees being shaken off with the leaves, we seeing all of the things of this world, but we can't necessarily see the kingdom of heaven. Read on, King. Come. <clears throat> For the things which are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. What the Lord read that again? For the things that are what? But the things which are not seen are eternal. The Lord said, "For the things which are seen are temporal." Everything you see is temporal. These bodies we're in, that's temporal. Esau's rulership, that's temporal. Going to work, that's temporal. These tents that we're going to be in, that's only for what? One or two more days? That's temporal. How much more are these bodies? Right? We understand that the Lord, can you go real quick to uh, Hosea chapter 6 and verse 2? Right? So, and, and, and also we're going to get John. So the Lord, we understand that Yahweh Shai, uh, he rose up his body in three days, as he's going to do with us as well. Right, bring this out in um, Hosea chapter 6. You can start at verse 1, King. Uh, Hosea chapter 6 and verse number 1. Right. Come and let us reason unto the Lord, <clears throat> for he hath torn. So like, read that again. It says, come and let us come. return. Come and let us return unto the Lord. Right, so uh, the Lord is uh, waking us up right now. Right, we're not the only uh -huh. brothers, as we know. Right, that's people in Japan, China, all over. All over the four parts of the world. Read on, King. Come. <clears throat> come, for he hath torn. And he will heal us. He'll smitten. And he will bind us up. Right, so the Lord had torn us, broke us down. Right, even being in these bodies, we've been broken down. Right, some brothers dealing with back pains, leg pains, ailments, so on and so forth. Some of us can't even walk. Right, the Lord has torn us down even on a physical level. Physical level, spiritual level. But guess what? He's going to rise us back up on a, 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 a physical level as well. Right, the Lord said, and he will bind us up. Read on, King. <clears throat> After two days, he will revive us. And we know that the Lord on a spiritual level has re revived us, right? We're living in a time where, again, uh, the, the Lord is waking up the sheep, right? You read about that in Revelation chapter 11 and 8 on down, right? Read on, King. In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. And we shall do what? And we, we shall, shall live, live in his sight. No, we're going to die again. And, and we, we shall, shall live, live in his sight. But there's a time coming where the Lord is going to uh, allow us to be immortal. Can you go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2? And I believe I want uh, 2022. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. Uh, 23. God. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 and verse number 23. Right. For God created man to be immortal. What the Lord say? For God created man to be immortal. Right. The Lord say he created man to be immortal. Right now, are we living immortally? No. No, you got people in dying in helicopter crashes. Uh, uh. Like like Kobe, yeah. I mean, things is going down in this earth. We understand that right now we're not immortal. We understand that we could today could be our last time breathing. We understand that because we in these bodies. But again, through through faith and belief in Yahweh Hashem Yashai, you can live forever. We can't worry about the things in this world. Don't let a job hold you back from them from serving Yahweh Hashem Yashai. Don't let the flesh, don't let women, lust, drugs, whatever, take you away from serving Yahweh Hashem Yashai when He's promised His servants immortality. Read on, King. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. Right, read on. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil. What the Lord say? Through envy of the devil. What is this world? Through envy of the devil. How about women? Through envy of the devil. And temptation? Through envy of the devil. The Lord said, nevertheless, through envy of the devil. Whatever you've been tempted by, you all have your own devices. Through envy of the devil, through worrying about this world and his flesh. Read on, King. Came death. Came what? Came death. Read. Into the world, and they that do hold us aside do find it. So when you worry about the things of this world, you're going to take hold of death. The Lord gave it. Hey, we're supposed to be promised immortality. That's what the Most High has given us from the beginning. So the Lord said he created man to be immortal. But what? We, we're dying right now. Because again, the things that we see, they're temporal, but the things which we, we don't see are eternal. Let's go to uh let's go to the book of Colossians, chapter 3, and you start at verse 1, King. Right, so we want to keep our minds fixated on Yahweh by Shimei Shai. Actually, before we get that, can you go to St. Luke chapter 12? I want to get this first, Baba Kishai. St. Luke chapter 12, and you can start at um, 32. St. Luke chapter 12 and verse number 32. Fear not, little flock. 
For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Read on. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that filleth not. Where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupt. Right, so you serve your how about your shy, you're laying your riches up in the kingdom of heaven, which no man can take from you. Read on, King. Huh. For when your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So whatever you desire, that's what your mind is going to be upon. If you desire this kingdom, you'll get this kingdom. There, in the world, they say manifest. The Most High is not dealing with that word manifest. It's not. I don't see it anywhere in the scripture. But nevertheless, we understand that believing in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, that's what the Most High is looking for. The Lord is not looking for carnal sacrifices, right? Burnt offerings or whole burnt offerings. The Lord is looking for a broken and contrite spirit, like I tell you in Isaiah, it's like uh, Psalm 51, verse 17 on down, and the book of um, the Song of the Three Little Children, verse 15 on down. So the Lord is looking for us being sincere and serving Him and believing in Him. That's what it's all about. If you believe in Yahweh Bashim El Shai, then the most most high willing you'll be a part of the kingdom of heaven. Let's um let's go to what I wanted earlier. Let's go to Colossians chapter three, Come. verse one. Come. So let's keep these things in mind as we continue to approach the last days. Come. Colossians chapter three and verse number one. Right. If ye then be risen with a much shot, seek those things which are above. No, worry about your job. Seek those things which are above. Continue to worry about oppression in this world. Seek those things which are above. The Lord said, if you're then risen with a Mashiach, the Most High has risen us up with Yahweh Shai. That's why we're here. Brothers not out here in a field in the middle of nowhere for no reason. We're here because we all believe in Yahweh Bashim El Shai. Prior to coming to the truth, I would have never have probably met none of y'all brothers. None of y'all brothers or sisters. But guess what? The Most High has brought us together because of our faith in Yahweh Bashim El Shai. And whoever doesn't believe in the Most High, and the Lord cast them away to the side. We see it all the time. But read on, King. Where Hamashiach sitteth on the right hand of our God. Right, read on. Set your affection on things above. Can you get that word affection in the Greek? So the Lord said, it's in Colossians 3 and 2. The Lord said, set your affection on the things uh, above and not on the things on this earth. Because the things on this earth, the Lord said, is temporal. So if you worry about the things that are temporal, your, your mind really is not right. If you always desiring the things that's in this world, your mind isn't right, knowing that there's a day approaching very soon where everything's be burned up and destroyed. Right? What a, you got it, King? Come, Come on, bring it up, King. Come on. This is affection, right? G5426, Perono, <clears throat> meaning to have understanding, be wise, to feel, to think, <clears throat> To direct one's mind. To do what? To direct, direct one's, one's mind. mind. One more time. To, to direct, direct one's, one's mind. mind. Right, more on that. To a thing to seek to strive for. So the Lord said, uh, now putting that in context, Colossians 3 and 2, the Lord says, set your affection on things above. That word we just read means to direct one's mind to seek uh, uh, that matter out, roughly paraphrasing. Right, so that's what we got to continue to meditate on. That's why the, through the spirit of power, Yahweh Hashem Shai, we're going into desiring that spiritual body. Because sometimes we forget about it. Sometimes you may forget, okay, I'm not going to be in this flesh forever. I'm not going to be in this body forever. I'm not going to have to wake up damn 5 o'clock in the morning to go to work forever. Damn slaving all day, 10, 12, uh, 16 hour shifts. Come on, praise the Most High. So we got to understand that the Most High has given us this charge that we got to continue to, this is a commandment. The commandments are not just found in the first five books in the Torah, the Torah, in the Hebrew. It's found all throughout the scripture. The Lord is telling us to do this. If you don't do this, and you, and you say, well, I don't got to listen to Paul and so on and so forth, and the most I going to get up with you. Because now you're not setting your mind upon the, uh, the kingdom. And if you're not setting your mind upon the kingdom, then that's not where your church is going to be. Right, but the brother will bring out the closing precepts. Come on, come on. Uh, I'll praise the most high. Can a brother go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50? Come on. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 50. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So remember, corruption cannot inherit incorruption. Uh, incorruption cannot inherit corruption. It cannot inherit the kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom of Yahweh, man. You cannot bring your earthly bodies into the kingdom. We have to desire the spiritual body. And to desire that spiritual body is to do the things that the Lord told us to do, man. Like the brother was bringing up, man. This is a commandment to set our things on above that are of that are from heaven, man. And not to desire the things of the world. Jordan verse 53, King. 53. 
God. <clears throat> Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised and corruptible. Read. And we shall be changed. What did the Lord say? And we shall be changed. What are we hoping for, tabernacles? And we shall be changed. And we're hoping to change our tabernacles, man. We're not hoping to dwell in tents all the damn, all over the damn lives, man. We're not hoping to be out here for two more months in the damn cold. We're not hoping for that. Right. We know it's for a season. That's what that's what this feast day reminds us of, man. Keep reading. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. What did the Lord say? For this corruptible must put on incorruption. No, dwell in the seventy dollar tents. <laughs> for this corruptible must put on incorruption. So we must put on incorruption, man. We must. We can't dwell in these bodies for long, man. It's for a season. And we're all hoping and we're all subject to that hope of those incorruptible bodies. Keep reading, King. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. What is it how we're going to do? Death is swallowed up in victory. And the Lord's going to swallow up death in victory, man. Read. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Read. The sting of death is sin. And the Lord said the sting of death is sin, man. So we got to remember to cast out sin from our temples, man. To cast out sin from our tents, man. Don't be the man like in Joshua, the seventh chapter, I believe verse 20 on down. They had things in the tent that they weren't supposed to have. And wrath came upon them, man. Make sure you're removing sin out your temple, man. Make sure you're removing sin out your tent while we dwell in these tents that are only for a season, man. Make sure you, you keep removing sin out of it and have your tent holy unto the Lord, man. Remind yourself of that, man. Don't be the brother that got a thousand things in his tent, man. He's got a thousand things. He's got damn all, all this junk in there, man. Brothers, open up your tent. You got things over here, things over there, food stains on the wall, man. Don't be that brother, man. Be the brother with a with a presentable tent, man. Because we know it's for a season, but you still have to be presentable in front of the Lord, man. Don't be that brother, man. But that's all I got, Ken. Right, could you give me um, Jeremiah 32 and verse 37? Right, just like the brothers were saying, this is, this is something that we as a people have to hope for. Right, this is something that should be a driving force for you in this truth. Is that we're going to receive that spiritual tabernacle. That we're going to receive that spiritual body that the Most High that he promised us. And we got to believe that the Most High he's going to do it because, well, he doesn't lie. The Most High, he's not a man that he should lie. Right. right so can you read what you got, King? Uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 32 and verse number 37. Right, read. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath. And I will bring them again unto this place. And I will cause them to dwell safe. Go on. And they shall be my people. And I will be their God. Go on. And I will give them one heart. What did that say? And, and I will give, give them, them one heart. heart. Right. And you read about this. This is this uh, precept, this verse, it mirrors what it says in Ezekiel the 11th chapter. And when it says it in Ezekiel 11th chapter, it says, I'm going to take away what? The stony heart. Now, again, when you read about heart in the Bible, it means mind. So what is that phrase that we use today when we talk about a stony, uh, a stony mind? Anybody know? A hard head. Right, right. So that's what the Most High, that's what he's going to do for us. He's going to take away that disobedience, that hard head out of us, so that we can, act, like I said, and like brothers have said, we can serve him perfectly. Right, go on. One heart and one way that they may fear me forever. That what? That, that they, they may fear me forever. forever. Right, and, and when we enter into this covenant and we get these spiritual bodies, we're never going to be able, the mo nobody's going to be able to overcome us. Right. Nobody's going to be able to take us out of our land anymore. Why? Because... The most high, he's just going to program us to keep like we read in Hebrews 8 chapter, right? We're going to he's going to program us to be able to serve him how he wants us to serve, uh, how he wants, yeah, how he wants us to serve him. Go on. For the good of them and of their children after them. Go on. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Go on. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do fuck it, to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly Go on. with my whole heart and with my whole soul. What did that say? With, with my, my whole, whole heart, heart and with my whole soul. Right, just like we try to serve the Most High with our whole heart and our whole soul, that's what the Most High is going to do for us when, we, uh, when, when, when he comes and delivers us. 
he's going to plant us in this land and he's going to do what's good, like I said, with his whole heart and with his whole soul. So that's something that we can hope for and that's something we can look to as a driving force, like I said, in this truth. Come on. For thus said the Lord, mm -hmm. like as I brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. Read that one more time. Come on. For thus said the Lord, like as I have brought all this great evil upon them, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. Right. So you, we always read uh, uh, um, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, every week at camp. So the, all, all the curses that we read, the Most High brought that on us. And we can see that. We're witnesses to that. But the Most High said what? That he's going to bring upon us all the good that are also that's also in that covenant. Right, right from 28, cha uh, ch chapter 28, 1 to 15, on, uh, well, 1 on down to 15. Right. So that's, again, that's something we can hope for. And that's what the Most High, that's what he's given us is, is hope. Like it says, we're prisoners to hope. But I'm going to pass it. St. Matthew, chapter 11, and verse number 17. And saying, we have piped unto you. We have what? We, we have, have piped, piped unto you. you. Right. And ye have not dead. And what? And ye, ye have, have not dead. dead. Right. Hey, the most high, he been, he been piping unto uh, Israel. And Israel don't want to dance. Israel don't want to listen to the will of, of the Lord. Don't want to do his will. So that's why now we're in this condition. So now, us as well. Again, the truth is uh, most house comparing it to a beautiful uh, feast, beautiful wedding, beautiful um, uh, music and all that. So most it's not hard to keep the ways of the Lord. Again, we know we're in the flesh, but if we keep the mindset that it's not hard, if we keep the mindset that we got to push through and do it to the end, we're going to be dancing and not be like, again, conform, conforming to this world, how Israel has done already. Go ahead. We have mourned unto you. And ye have not lamented. Right. And again, hey, we mourn because we see the conditions of our people. Right? We see how it, we're always at the bottom of every society. We see how everybody look down on us. We can't seem to, you know, get get an upper hand and over here or anywhere else in this world. So, hey, man, but our people, they don't see that. So that's the, what the, the again, we got to remember tabernacles. We're feasting, music uh, bumping. Uh, we're reading the scripts, meditating, talking to each other. But also we got to remember when the hard times, we got to keep that same energy because, again, a lot, like the brother said earlier, a lot of people, they fell out because, you know, they, they heard the music, they stopped dancing. They was mourning. They say, man, I want to be happy. Let me go smoke some weed again or let me go do something again, right? So we got to always remember, keep, keep the faith regardless. Keep going. John. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he hath a devil. Right. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous, a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is testified of her children. Right. Hey, you see two different ways, uh, the John the uh, the Baptist, how he came uh, from Yahweh's side, two different ways. Just like two different camps, people camp banging, all that stuff, or whatever it may be. They teach in two different so-called doctrines, two different ways. But the wisdom of the, of, the, of the Mosiah, the wisdom is still being put forth. So we got to understand that, look, it's not about this, it's not about that. It's keeping the ways of Yahweh Simi Yahweh regardless, keeping the ways of, of the Lord, understanding what, uh, what's going on, and not say, oh, this guy knows better, or that guy don't know nothing. It is what it is, as long as everybody sincerely Keeping the ways of Yahweh Shem Yahushua, sincerely following the truth, following the Mosah, the wisdom will have her way in, in the children of the Lord at the end of the day, man. And we got to endure. So, Mosah, we, we all see each other in the chariots in the kingdom rejoicing with that real, having a real Sabbath, man. Right? Real rest, no more work, no more nothing. And we get slaves, all that. We ain't <laughs> but God, I'm done with that. I'll praise the Mosah. Can you get um second Ezra chapter seven and verse forty three? Con. So we about to wrap up this lesson. Lord willing, you 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 take heed. We are going to upload this video, most high willing, uh to the the YouTube channel if you want to go back. Um uh, most high willing brothers describing out the precepts as well. But let's get this in second Ezra seven and forty three. Second Ezra chapter seven and verse number forty three. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. What the Lord say? But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. Right, read on. And the beginning of the immortality for to come 
We're in it. Corruption is past. We're in what? Corruption is past. The Lord said, for the day of doom shall be the end of this time. And we looking very soon at the day of doom. Brothers receiving dreams. We seeing the different signs that's happening in the earth. And the most high, like the brother said, the most high has never lied. So if he says something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Right? So we got to continue to, and if we believe in Yahweh Hashem Yashai, like a body is said, you got to keep that same energy. Whether you down, whether you up, so on and so forth. Re, uh, it also said, it says, Slakia, yeah. and the beginning of immortality for to come, we're in corruption is past. And we know that we in these corruptible bodies. Most high willing brothers continue to endure so we can enter into that incorruptible body like the brother brought out in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. I want to get this last precept, 1 John 3 and 2. We're going to close out with that. 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 2. 1 uh, John chapter 3 and verse number 2. Right. Beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Right. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. What the Lord say? We, we shall be like him. Read it one more time. We, we shall be like him. him. Read. For we shall see him as he is. And the Lord said, we know when he returns, we shall be like him. So most high willing brothers, keep that in mind. You will receive that incorruptible crown, incorruptible body, and live in, immortal uh, in immortality as long as you continue to endure to the end of believing in about Shemel Shah. But with that, Kwame Yashirala. Kwame Yashirala. Kwame Yashirala. Kwame Yashirala. Kwame Yashirala. Kwame Yashirala.